The Paper Boy is a 1994 thriller directed by Douglas Jackson and starring Alexandra Paul, Mark Marat, Bridget Tierney, Francis Bay, and William Catt. The film opens in slow motion. Ah, oh, this is so sweet. <laughs> Holy shit! Now she'll have to come back for sure. Uh, you know, this kid's gonna jerk off to this tape, right? And Johnny goes out to deliver newspapers. <laughs> newspapers! That's a lot of effort. I just quietly snuck in the door. They're good friends. School is out in Boston and Melissa's at home with Cammy when the phone rings. Mom, it's Diana, long distance. Oh. Remember long distance. She gets the news and heads home. Hello. Your mother told me all about you. I feel like I know you already. Johnny is already being creepy. Him and my mom are divorced. He lives in Italy. Where's that? On a map. Smart ass. Jesus, Johnny is even creeping the kid out. I wonder where the pictures from last summer are. Mom said she made an album, but I can't find it. I'm sure they're hidden somewhere next to a pile of soiled socks. Melissa and Cammy leave, allowing Johnny to come on in. Just take the hair, not the brush. Then he bugs the place. Uh, I think you can see that. It's funeral day and Johnny gets a limo invite. He discusses his mother's funeral and ladies and gentlemen, we have your trauma. Where are we going? I have to show you something. Is he taking her to the stiff room? Thank God it's just a room of coffins. My mother died. I snuck back in so I could see her one last time. What? Why don't you lie down in one? They're really soft. No, they're not. Why do they need to be comfortable? You're fucking dead. The day of my mother's funeral, I fell asleep in one of these. That look on her face. Oh, thank Christ, they're leaving. Then Melissa invites Johnny to a barbecue. Then Brian calls, asking Melissa out on a date, and she decides to ditch the barbecue. That's a terrible idea. Thanks so much for coming on such short notice. But you invited me to dinner. No! It was supposed to be us, the family! He took that well. Look, he has a dad! Johnny watches him leave and you better not go up there, old man. I always had a crush on you, though, you know. Is she really buying this shit? I'm sorry for misbehaving at the barbecue. I promise to be a good boy from now on. Sure, that will work. Johnny goes to deliver the letter and discovers Brenda participating in sexy time. The little shit! Busted. No kiss. Brenda busts Johnny out for being a fucking pervert. Then the next day he gets hosed. Holy shit, is she going to spray him too? That would be hilarious! You weren't snooping around the house last night, were you, Johnny? Brenda's a liar. I didn't say anything about Brenda. Well played, pal. That night at Brenda's... Did he climb up there? Go in? Lock the window? And just leave out the fucking front door? Anyway, she's fucked. Johnny stops by the next day to announce the news. Well, she was trying to get in the house without her parents knowing. She fell and broke her neck. She's gonna be a paraplegic from now on. Then he just fucking leaves. Yeah, that kid is sketch. What pervy shit is Johnny going to pull this time? There it is. Oh shit.
You know, I kind of think she knows what's going on. You son of a bitch! Melissa tells him to finish later, and yes, Johnny is an asshole for mowing that early. Plot twist! Cammie is burglarizing Johnny's house! Selfie. Uh, that's a disturbing painting. He's busted, but Johnny convinces Cammie to go to where they run into Mrs. Rosemont, and they don't seem to like each other much. But she delivers this warning. He has the mark. The mark of Cain. Ew, it's icky. Ooh, just hold it in your hand. Yeah, I wouldn't touch that. Johnny bought him at the mall. You're like my family. We're not your family, Johnny. <laughs> Melissa discusses Johnny's dad, and that runs him off. You're gonna need to play that card more often. Primitive Amazon. And he brings Cammie a doll and Melissa some jewelry. I really can't accept these. I... You've got to keep it. You've just got to. Do you know how hard it is to return online purchases in 1994? Fuck! Jesus, this kid is clean, but thankfully Brian arrives. They discuss Johnny having a crush and someone is listening. Johnny tries to weasel his way in, but Brian denies. Not tonight, slugger. Don't call me that. Calm down, Slick. Hell, there isn't even any room in the goddamn car. Shit, throw gravel at the kid. I like pizza. It's bedtime and Cammy has questions. What's the mark of Cain, Mommy? You didn't expect this shit tonight. You're going to need a whole bottle of wine. Where'd you hear that? Johnny? The old witch, Mrs. Rosemont. She said Johnny wasn't right in the head. He isn't. I think he's mad at you, though. My mommy, too. I can't imagine why, but at least she gets free labor for her lawn. Look, Mommy's a witch. Damn. Rosemont delivers another warning. That McFarley boy. He's bad. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. And here he is. How dare you come into my house when I'm not here? How'd you get in here? Do you like apple pie, Cammy? He goes to that question. Oh, come on. Can't you just make me an apple pie? My mother always made me an apple pie when I behaved. Not anymore. No. And he is tossed with the reality of the situation. <laughs> That's a threat. That night, Melissa spots Dad and they have a talk. I'm Melissa Thorpe from next door. I'd like to talk to you about your son. What did he do? That's a good sign. I'm sorry I broke your dish. Here's some money for my paper route. So please don't be mad at me. Pretty much this entire movie is just Johnny apologizing for being a creepy fuck. And Johnny is banned. Ha ha ha, we're sane. Dad talks to the door leading to some mom backstory and attempts some bribery. Oh, thanks for the golf clubs, Dad. And he has other news. I've been offered a position in our Tustin division. And Mrs. McBride says it's real close to Disneyland. Doesn't that sound like something? Of course, Johnny takes it well. Have a new life. So Tustin... What? Four. Melissa prepares Cammy for a pajama party as Johnny looks for a sewer main in the basement. Dead? Brian arrives and... Ooh. And Johnny gets to listen to them have sex. Are you saying she beat him? Well, the child was defiant and willful. His mother had to take measures. No wonder he's a psycho. She leaves an uh-oh. Do I have to pay for this? Well, we now know Mrs. Rosema is fucked. Johnny, get the hell out of here. No! You've got to talk to me. It's time to call the cops. Does Johnny have a key to every house? 
It's okay. Want to get blood stains all over the carpet? He's not gonna kill that dog, is he? <laughs> Holy shit! And she's dead. Swerve. I want Mira and Elizabeth. She's all alone, and I bet she's scared. She's sneaking out to get that doll so that we can have the child in danger finale. Johnny is really getting his money's worth out of that bat. He must be a slugger. He goes for the kill, but decides to go for the burn. Too bad Brian is alive, but he's on fire. Melissa arrives to find Mrs. Rosemont dead, then receives a call to let her know he has her daughter. Police? She gets to Johnny searching the house, and oh, it was just a video. I made this shrine for you. He didn't make us come here. We came back because my mother had... And it clicked. They end up in the basement and Melissa hears Cammie on the baby monitor at her own home. Why are you doing this? Because... I love you. Well, we don't love you. So Johnny is going to bury her in the basement. Hello, sir. In your face! Oh, oh my god! It's another mama's boy with a pickaxe. The cops finally arrive and Johnny plays some bullshit. Help. She broke into my house and tried to kill me. That's not true. She's crazy. She thinks she's my mom. Sorry, Johnny. Here's the guy you tried to barbecue earlier for fucking up your barbecue. Tell him, Melissa. Tell him I'm good. Tell him. Tell him. Yeah, Johnny sucks. The Paperboy's an interesting take on a well-worn plot that crumbles as it goes along. Johnny is a way over-the-top character, so you have Melissa and Cammie being creeped out by him when he first shows up. And no one calls the cops in this movie. If some fuck keeps hanging around, I want him to leave. I'm getting a restraining order on that bitch. And the way the film defends beating the shit out of your kid kind of doesn't feel right. It seems like all this could have been avoided if the parents weren't such colossal fuck-ups. But the real culprit of this film is Melissa's mother. If she hadn't sold her daughter as a second coming, none of this shit would have happened. 